There's something slightly cool about devices that allow you to tap in with your NFC or RFID tag. I've had a PN532 for a while and I thought it was time I brought some more coolness to my Pico projects. Let me show you how. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT and other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. It's only when I started this project that I became aware of how many different types of RFID tags there are out there. And the relatively poor amount of library supporting for tags on the Pico. I found I didn't need to worry too much though, as I just needed the tag ID. And that's enough to enable most of the ID services I want to run. I did add a second factor to the authentication tool though, only in a four digit pin, not terribly secure. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment link that's in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there all the way from the UK. And of course, I'd love to meet you all there too. Please hit the like button and subscribe for more. This video is sponsored by Wolf SSL. In this video, I'm actually going to capture a PIN number entered by myself onto the Pico. Now, I'm going to actually hard code that in the code, but of course, that's a really bad practice. What I should do is store that data securely within the flash. And I do that by using Wolf SSL's crypt library and actually use one of their cryptographic hash um, algorithms to hold that data securely, as well as uh, cryptographically seeding that. Wolf SSL have Crypt and many other really useful libraries, all available in commercial or open source models. Go check them out. This video is all about a NSC module, the NSC module V3 which is really just the PN532 chip and a breakout board around that. The module has an SPI interface, which I'm not going to use at all. I'm just going to leave disconnected and a I2C um, interface, which is what I'm going to use. So just those four pins. It's only when you start looking at NFC that you suddenly find actually how broad an area tree is and the number of different tag types are actually in use. So there are five tag types currently uh, defined by the NFC ta um, tag forum. And those are these uh, five here. Now, some of them are not very common. Some of them are quite common according to this. Um, now, the really interesting thing I found when I was looking at this is that the tags that I've been given with this kit, none of those. They're actually the MyFair Classic. Now, MyFair Classics do not actually conform properly to any of those tag definition standards. But fortunately, um, our module here will read them fine. And that's all that really matters. Intriguingly enough, my uh, smartwatch is also a MyFair type of tag, though instead of being a MyFair Classic, it's a MyFair Plus which as far as I can see also doesn't conform to these tags, uh, definitions and standards. Now, if you want to work out what your tag that you've got lying around is and how to actually use it, um, the best way I found was there's an Android app that called NFC Tools. I'm sure there's a similar app for the Apple uh, ecosystem. I just happen to be using an Android phone and this will allow you to scan a tag and see what type it is and what uh, it conforms to, which is really, really useful because then we can go and see how what libraries we might use to, to work with that. And indeed, if it's actually going to be compatible with our reading chip at all. Now, the library I'm going to use is um, a already ported Pico library for NFC uh, reading. It actually works and is designed for N tags. Now I've got my fair tags, so uh, they're not N tags. They don't conform to that. I'm not going to be able to put data on them onto these tags or read specific data records from the tags. But what I can read is an ID. And to be honest, for access control, 
that's all I really need. So that's for the way I'm going. So my demo project here is going to be a stain machine really that is going to read um, the ID from a tag, read the pin entered by a user, check it and display an appropriate message before going back to waiting for a new tag. So we're going to display all of this on a little uh, SSD OLED screen uh, which is what I'm going to use for my displaying of all my messages. Then I'm going to use my NFC module for actually reading the ID. And then I'm going to use a 4x4 uh, switch matrix as a little keypad in a sort of hexadecimal mode to read uh, 16 different values in and compare them against the pin. And uh, then within the check, we're going to do that check and then display back onto that display either hello to the user that we just know has, uh, has logged in or tapped in or is going to say unknown when it doesn't know the uh, details. I'm going to connect our NFC module onto I2C0 and I'm going to use GP0 and GP1 and it's going to require three volts and ground of connections as well of course. Our little OLED display is going to be on I2C1 and I'm putting that on GP2 and GP3 and again it's going to need three volts. Now the matrix switch um, I've talked about before on a video here and so you can go and see the details on that. Basically that's got eight connections so I'm going to put all of the rows on a GP6 to 9 and columns on 10 to 13. All of the code uh, for this is on my repo here that you can go and look at and experiment with. It's just a, a, a repo of experiments including this one to do an ID check. So for this example I'm going to use a couple of libraries as well as the uh, Pico NFC library uh, which is what I'm actually going to use for detecting my tag near my uh, NFC uh, device. I'm also going to use the Pico SSD 1306 library which is going to let me write to that OLED screen um, easily. That's just the two libraries I've chosen to use on this one. So if we have a look at ID and pin, uh, have a quick scan at the top level CMake file, you see I'm basically just pulling in those uh, two libraries there. Um, so we've got the, uh, there we go, the Pico uh, NFC and the um, SSD 1306. Um, I, I'm using my normal approach of shared variables to uh, locate libraries that are not directly under the project folder. And that's because uh, I was playing around with two or three examples in here that I'm only talking to you guys about one. Uh, other quick question, uh, point is uh, when we're including the Pico SDK, um, I'm using the environment variable Pico SDK path, which I assume is set in your environment as it is in mine. So let's have a look at the code. Um, there's not a lot of code in here really. Uh, we have one uh, main.cpp and one other uh, uh, class which is my switch 4x4 um, class and that's largely what I showed you previously in a previous video of how to really use that 4x4 switch. So I'm not actually going to talk through that at all. Let's just really have a look at main and what we're actually doing. So the first thing is I'm going to set up a state machine that is going to just get get us through the uh, the states of waiting for the tag, um, waiting for a pin, getting an ID and checking that ID, um, displaying either the ID and saying hello John or you know if it's me, or displaying an error of you know unknown tag. So that's uh, our state machine and that's basically that loop I showed you earlier on the video and the uh, we're going to store the correct access codes for those that we should have in my access record structure and that's basically going to have the ID of my tag um, which hopefully is going to match to our tag, uh, the pin number which I'm going to store as a character array and my name which is going to be short because I'm only going to store up to eight characters, well seven characters plus uh, end of string marker. So for um, for the test purposes, I set up two uh, examples here. 
So I'm going to have uh, John and Bob, and uh, these are their associated uh, tags, and they've got slightly different pin numbers, um, and of course different names. So great, that's that's all what's, what's in the main code then, because this is all just the main function. It's a rather long function, I perhaps could refactor this to be a bit better, but let's talk through how this actually works. So I've got a few variables that I'm setting up. I'm, for instance, going to flash an LED to give me confidence that things are working and it's the onboard LED. Um, and um, I'm also setting up our, our state machine and giving it that we're in starting tag wait state and uh, setting up our switches that I'm going to use for pin entry. Down here, I'm going to set up our NFC. So I'm using this uh, Pico NFC config uh, definition to actually initialize that, to put it onto I2C0, and we're putting it on pin 0 and 1. And then I'm also going to initialize um, I2C1, because that's what I'm going to connect my our little uh, SSD screen to. Um, and uh, that's so to initializing that, initializing the screen, I'm going to just put start up on it and then I'm going to wait for three seconds just so I can see that everything's working before we actually get into the loop. So the loop is really a state machine and each of those states I've just got an if statement to capture and then for the code in there. So if we're in a state for waiting for tag, we're going to clear the screen and put ta um, tag on there. And then we're going to use this command, uh, the Pico um, pin 532 read passive target ID, which is basically going to just read the card and give us back the ID. Uh, the ID is stored as a uh, array of uh, uint eights. So um, I'm going to print that out for uh, diagnostic purposes. And I'm also going to make our ID up by uh, taking each of the uh, four uh, digits that make that up and actually just left shifting them so that we actually get ID to be a 32-bit ID of the uh, card that we've just seen, which hopefully should match the cards we've got in our, our um, access record up here. Let's see. If the tag happens to be longer than four or isn't equal to four uh, uh, digits or four um, ints uh, long, then something's wrong and I'll, I'll report on uh, that we've got an error. Then once we have a successfully uh, read a tag, we can go in the, into the state pin weight. So in state pin weight, we're basically going to keep checking to see if there's any characters or any switch data available from our switches. And then I'm going, if there is, we're going to read that switch. We're then going to convert that switch from to uh, a character code that it represents, presuming that that uh, uh, pad is actually operating as a hex pad. So, but though my examples, I'm only using uh, numeric digits. So I'm just going to then keep storing those in until we've got uh, four of those available. And I'm going to put whatever digit you entered and I'm going to actually print it on the screen. That isn't exactly very secure. No one actually expects their pin number to come up on the screen as they type it in. So, but for test purposes, that's what this is going to do. And once we've got four uh, digits, then we can move on to the state of ID check. So in the state ID check, we're actually going to go through all of our list of um, access records and see if any of them match. When they match, then we're going to see if our pins match. And if our pins match, then we've got it and we can go on to the state ID display. If the pins don't match, then we can go on to the state error display. So uh, that's um, the way we're going to do that. If it's ID display, then we're going to say hello and the name of the individual we've just found. Uh, if it's uh, in error state, then we're going to just display unknown. And in both those states, we're going to wait for three seconds before dropping back into tag wait state. So that's it, really. Um, let's uh, take a look at that demo run. And it really is just that uh, cycle that we've talked about earlier. 
So let's start by waiting for attack and then we're going to enter pin and we're into a bum pin this time. Um, especially as I'm having a little bit of problems with the, the uh, pad at this point. There we go. And it will say unknown tag. Resets. Now let's enter a, a tag properly. So I'm going to enter the correct pin number and it will say hello John. Successful test. This quick identification of my identity might enable a few crazy projects. I have a problem with sweets and biscuits. I just can't help but eat the whole packet. So perhaps a dispenser that limits the number I can have and can distinguish between me and my partner. Okay, so you know I'm going to go and nick my partner's watch at that point, don't you? If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment links in the description. I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and of course I'd love to see you all there too. Thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe and please like the video. Bye bye for now.